On a été attaqué des deux côtés, oui. Donc, euh, pourtant, la police. We were attacked on both sides. The police were escorting us with cars at the front and at the back of the bus. But we were attacked on the sides right after crossing the border into Angola. The first reaction we had was to hide under our seats. We stayed on the floor during the attack, which lasted around 10-15 minutes. The players are shocked. They don't want to play in the competition anymore. We will meet all night long so we can decide what we're going to do. Right now, we don't even have all our clothes. We know for a fact the attack happened on the Togolese national team bus as it was crossing the border from the Democratic Republic of Congo to Angola, to the region in Cabinda where several matches are taking place and where Togo was facing Ghana on Monday. As far as how many players are injured, we are hearing two players have been injured, but this is not a report confirmed by CNN. This is what the French press is reporting. What's important to say about the French press and why they are also hearing from players is that a lot of the players on the Togolese national team play in France or there are direct contacts uh, uh, to the country. Um, th there was machine gun attack and according to one of the quotes from one of the players, again to French press, he said everyone died dived under the seats and the police fired back. He said they were attacked like dogs by hooded gunmen armed to the teeth. So it does sound pretty dramatic, Hala, what happened out there. What we are also trying to make sure is that it did happen in Angolan territory because um, the, the bus was crossing the border and we are still hearing some, uh, some uh, uh, discrepancy on that particular subject, whether the bus was already in Angolan territory or still in the Democratic Republic of Congo. What we understand is that this has nothing to do with football as well. Cabinda is a, 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 an oil-rich region in Angola where there are many rebels uh, trying to gain independence within that region, so there is speculation that it might have something to do with that. Holiday. Right, because the natural question would be, you know, is this motivated by a competition, by the uh, Africa Cup of Nations, or is this something that happened because rebels were in the area and just decided to attack this uh, tour bus? It's still unclear, exactly. or is That's that the idea that we're getting, that it's probably rebels and not related to the sport? That is what we understand. It's not related to the sport, but as you know, Hala, in uh, sporting events like this, and the African Cup of Nations is the highest profile sporting event hosted in Africa every two years. Of course, this year we've got the World Cup in Africa as well, mm -hmm. in South Africa, but obviously terrorist groups try to target high profile events and uh, uh, people connected with high profile events to have a bigger impact. That is obviously what we are speculating at the moment, but no one has taken uh, credit for this attack yet, Hala. Now, remind us about the Africa Cup of Nations. Is this uh, sub a competition that might be disrupted as a result of this attack? I understand the Togolese team is saying there needs to be a suspension at this point. Exactly. That, that is the, the last we heard as well. Uh, a couple of the Togolese players that have been able to uh, be reached on the phone, they said the last thing on their mind right now is playing football. They're just thinking about uh, the team members that, that were injured in this machine gun attack and that they've reportedly gone to hospital and they're trying to see that everyone is okay. I can't imagine even the other teams also Hala, saying, how can we play when we know that our our uh, compatriots from other teams uh, have been hurt by an attack and who knows whether there could be another attack so I think the whole question of security will also be raised in Angola um, right now we have to wait to see what the organizers will say how they will react but this is the continent's biggest football competition 16 teams divided into four groups so many of the top African players are high-profile players in the stage of world football the Didier Drogba's the Samuel Eto's one of the players on the Togolese national team yeah. is Emmanuel Adebayor and he's one of the top stars in the Premier League so that does give you uh, an idea of the impact that an attack like this can have not only in the world of football but in the world of the new spectrum as well. Howard. Absolutely. We're learning from uh, news agencies in Angola that a group by the name of the FLEC, the Forces for the Liberation of the State of Cabinda, have claimed responsibility 
for this gun attack on the Togo uh, football national team that was traveling in a bus uh, from Congo into Angola, obviously, uh, to participate in the Africa Cup of Nations that kicks off on Sunday. What we do understand is that several people were injured in this attack, and it appears that the driver of the bus, of the bus has been killed. We know that Emmanuel Adebayo, who is a very popular football star in Manchester City, a striker uh, was on that bus but he is unharmed uh, you know Kabinda is in the north of uh, Angola and it's a very oil rich uh, country and it's very unstable uh, the, the FLEC has been waging a war against the government of Angola for decades now uh, and of course uh, the issue of contention is the oil in that region and uh, and you know Becky the tournament itself is some of the games are going to be played in Cabinda and, and before players uh, went like uh, Adebayo went to Angola they were asked whether they felt safe playing in such a volatile region and Adebayo I'll just quote here uh, told one journalist that we were born in Africa so we know what it's about he says I'm prepared for Cabinda and I will enjoy myself obviously nobody thought yep. anything like this would happen to the Togo team players cowered on the ground moments after the terror attack Gunmen armed with machine guns sprayed their coach with bullets as they traveled through the Kabinda region bordering Congo. The driver was killed instantly. Nine others were injured. Manchester City's Emmanuel Adebayor escaped unharmed, as did Aston Villa's Mustafa Salafu, but two other players suffered bullet wounds. It happened only 10 kilometers from the border. There was rapid fire by bush rebels who attacked the two buses at the same time. We had nine people injured, and the response of our escort helped us to limit the casualties and losses. With 48 hours before kickoff, the African Nations Cup is now in turmoil. Togo is scheduled to play Ghana on Monday, but some of the players now say they want to fly home. The Football Association say they're in contact with the English clubs who've got players in the tournament. Portsmouth's already raised concerns. They've got four players in the competition and want them to come home if their safety is in doubt. But despite the terror fears, the Confederation of African Football says the competition will go ahead. The government would like to say that this was a lamentable incident, but the Angolan government wants to reaffirm that this will not affect in any way whatsoever the organization and security of the African Cup of Nations. On the contrary, we are going to redouble our efforts. We are going to further reinforce all the mechanisms and continue to guarantee security and to create all the conditions which guarantee the success and organization and the safety of people. Angolan separatist guerrilla group FLEC claimed responsibility for the shooting and is threatening further attacks. Now it remains to be seen whether some of Europe's biggest stars will play in Africa's biggest football competition. Chloe Potter, Sky News.